check out this cheap little thing. Remember these guys? America Online, better known as AOL, or more colloquially as AOL. <laughs> okay, I kid, mostly. This is kind of a piece of strange gear. It's really not something that you would expect to see. I'd imagine that this was another one of those things that they sent in the mail along with all of their free promotional CDs that basically were good for nothing else but coasters. This is actually a Pre-Tech OEM camera, that's P-R-E-T-E-C. I believe they sold theirs under the DC-600 name. This one identifies itself as a DC-620. I know if you look on Amazon, you'll find a DC-600 that looks fairly strikingly similar to this. But we can get something of an idea as to how cheap and crappy it is. It says digital camera, 640 by 480 which actually probably wouldn't have been too bad when this thing was new, but Nowadays, that's hopelessly unloaded. Focus. Six volt DC input, four double A's, that's this thing over there. This is a brightness control for the LCD display, which is actually kind of not too bad for something that would have been made for as old as this is. I mean, I bought digital cameras from the same era whose display actually may even be smaller than the display in this thing. Oh, probably more like the same size. This is obviously broken. I mean, it works if you hold it in place or you tape it in place. But, yeah, considering I paid like $4 for this, that probably was a little bit too much. Oh well. It's got an S uh, SD CF card slot, so you could put in your CF cards if you really wanted to. Although it does have a little bit of onboard storage. Not real sure how much. I can look that up, though, I believe. And now. I'll tell you what the Pre-Tech DC600 has, either in the video description or as a video title. So here's the messed up battery cover, here's a little lanyard, there's nothing on that side. On this side, you've got, what is that? That says video out, that's a video output right there, which would be for your standard 1.8 millimeter output cable. I have one of those, I could probably use it for that. There's a DC 6 volt input right there, which is pretty standard, actually. I could use my Panasonic VHSC power supplies with that, which is pretty cool. That says digital. It looks like a 3.5 millimeter jack. I have no idea what it would have been used for. And a USB Type-A connector. Kind of strange. I would have thought that I would have seen a Type-B on there. Maybe even a mini USB connection. We'll take a look at the controls on the top in a second. There's your little optical viewfinder. It's really kind of useless because it's just a thing that goes out to the front. Menu, left and right, as well as timer record and flash controls. I think I'm gonna have to do something about this. There we go, that ought to do the job. <laughs> All right, so anyway, on the front, you can see the flash. The absolute pinhole of a lens. I believe there is something up there. I don't really know what that is, and I know that there's an, a red LED down there for the timer record indicator. It's fixed focus. You get two options, normal and distant. I don't know if it really does anything at all. Just that there's a switch. Doesn't seem to do a whole lot. I mean, I could feel that it might do something, but not really much. There's a couple of controls there. There's a mode switch, play and record, which is kind of an odd phrasing for a digital camera. Usually you'd expect to see something like that on a camcorder. And a power switch, and of course the all-important shutter button. Let's see it in operation. Alright, so unfortunately I have no tripod with which to use with this, because I got them all set up for thunderstorm recording, but we'll go ahead and turn it on. See the display come on, so you can get a look at, at what it sees. Hopefully. Hopefully it actually shows up on the final recording. Now I'm not sure. Put on the info display and we can see that it's reset itself. As you can see, you can take 32 pictures in normal quality mode. There's a couple of the options that show up. You can bring up the menu. I'm not sure if it shows up on the video. But the view screen looks rather unstable in its picture output, which is kind of interesting. 
It says compensation. I don't know what you would call that. Exposure. It's probably exposure. White balance controls. You get a couple of those. Auto play. I don't know what that is. I think that's maybe an auto mode change. If you let it sit here for a certain number of minutes, it'll go into playback mode. You can transfer everything from the onboard memory over to the CF card, which will be useful. I don't know if that actually will work. Auto power off. Your quality settings. You get two of them. Normal and fine. I'll leave it alone for now. You can format. And our date and time sets. I'm going to go ahead and set that, and then we will have a look at what it can do. Alright, so here is a normal quality picture mode test. It's normal focus. I don't know if it's, this is what would qualify as normal or not. I will go ahead and I will push the button. Flash will go off. And there you can see the picture that it just took. At the end of the video, I will put these pictures so you can see them for yourself. I'm not expecting any miracles. Because, I mean, seriously, look at the pinhole that this thing has to work with. You're not going to get much out of that. So we'll take another picture. This time we will turn the flash off. So we will push this button. Oh, so auto flash, flash on, and flash disabled. So here's what it looks like. You can see that it really picks up the motion. I wonder if I can get that a little better. Probably not. I think I move around too much. I'm almost certainly better. All right, let's take a distant shot. Okay, you can see I've shifted it to distant mode. I'm gonna go ahead and take a picture of all that stuff up there. It just shut off for some reason. Okay, you'll just have to take my word that I'm taking a picture because this thing is incredibly being incredibly hokey right now. So we'll just go ahead and we'll take a shot with the flash on, and there you can see what it looks like. So now let's take a couple of fine quality photographs. Remember that I'm taking these to the internal memory. So we'll go to memory, or memory, menu, and quality, change that to fine, and we'll set that. Oops. Exit. And we'll try something. We'll put a subject in front of it. You can see it's got a very, very narrow field of view. Put it into normal, like it was before. We'll leave the flash on. And we will go ahead and take a picture. With the flash. So you can see what it looks like. Probably not the best. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a timer record at fine quality. So we'll put the timer on. I don't know if it's going to try and take a picture now. Guess not. We'll see what it can and can't see. There's our timer record. Too bad you can see too much of the ugly guy operating the camera. <laughs> um. so anyway, there's your fairly cheap and cheerful. Put it into play and record mode. I'm going to go ahead and delete that one. So I believe to do that, we push this erase key. So we can erase the current one, or we can erase everything. I'm going to go ahead and set erase current on that one, and we'll go on quit. I don't know what the album button does. What does that do? Well, that shows us an album view, so now you can see all the pictures. Or just one. It's loading off of the internal memory, which appears to be rather slow. 
So we'll go back and we'll take another timer record shot. This time we'll make it of something a little bit better than just me. We'll grab this camcorder, which happens to be sitting right here. See if I can bring this back enough that it'll actually see it. Of course, we can do that just like this. So you can see the green light just barely on the video. And then it takes the picture, and there it is. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the card in place. I'm going to transfer all the photos over to the card, which I have already formatted. So go ahead and we'll insert the card. Kind of hokey. Now, I don't remember which way it goes in. Is it this way? Yes. Put the card in place. And we can see we've now jumped to F125. Then we'll take another picture of something. I don't know of what just yet. So we'll go to the menu and we will select transfer. Copy internal pictures to the CF card. Yes. Please wait. We even get a status indicator. Look at that. That's cool. Copy complete. All right. Back. Exit. So our number has now gone down. We can now take 121 fine pictures only. We'll take a couple. Let's just take one here of this, this camcorder once again. Which looks kind of strange. And then I'll timer record one and point it at something. Maybe I'll turn the uh, the flash off. And I'll timer record, and we'll point it at something, and it'll turn off because it's a piece of crap. All right, so there's what it sees. I think that's it. What I'm going to do now is go ahead and transfer all of these pictures to the computer and have a look at them, and just see what kind of horrors await probably not going to be pretty. So how many of you remember this camera? Well, those of you that were watching my videos back in 2012 and 2011, 2013 maybe, probably do, but those of you who don't, or were not watching that, probably have no clue what this is. The Nikon Coolpix 885. Unfortunately it no longer works. I don't know what happened to it. Uh, just out of the blue one day the shutter stopped opening. So It's been relegated to the parts bin for the longest time. Of course, I haven't really needed parts off of it, so it stayed intact. But now, it comes in handy for transferring pictures. Because it can do that. None of my uh, Kodak cameras will allow you to access the card directly, which is kind of annoying. So here we can see DC620. And there are all our pictures. Wow. I'm impressed. Look at the quality on that. And it's in focus, which, I hate to say it, is something that these Kodak cameras can't manage to do. I believe those are fixed focus as well. But they may be fixed focus permanently, as in it's only got a distant mode as opposed to having distant and normal. I don't know. But uh, that looks really good. Again, you'll see these at the end of the video. There's the picture from the SD card, or CF card. I keep calling it an SD card. I'm too do school, I guess. Even normal quality doesn't look too bad. I mean, that looks terrible, but that's because I couldn't hold it still. I mean, okay, let's, let's get real here, folks. It's a cheap camera, you can tell. That it was that those were taken on a cheap camera, but for a mediocre piece of crap like this, 
those aren't too bad. I am actually fairly impressed with the image quality out of this. Again, let's not kid ourselves, it's limited to 640 by 480 pictures, whereas those back there, even those are capable of several megapixels. Uh, I believe this is like a 0 0.3 megapixel camera. I don't know, but uh, it's not terrible. I would actually use this to take pictures, and maybe I will actually use it to take pictures because it seems to be better at taking in-focus shots than any of my Kodak cameras are. And of course, I can't use this. And my Sony Mavica did not make it to the year 2018, which is rather annoying. And I haven't been able to find another one. But uh, there you go. There's your America Online photo cam. Basically a Pre-Tech DC600 with different badging. An actually kind of not terrible, mediocre camera. Thank you for watching. If you have any comments, feel free to leave them down below. And this is CP666 signing off, and I hope to see you next time. Till then.